My dog is barking. Reggie, shut up. I should have been saying the authors for all of these. Whoops. It's so cute. Feelings can be complicated sometimes. Hey, I'm here today to do my very first review of picture books for you. May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And so I thought I would focus on books with Asian American or Pacific Islander protagonists. Incorporating diversity in book selection is really important to me. When I was a teacher, it was something I was really passionate about in my school district, fighting for books to be incorporated in the curriculum that weren't just by dead white men. So as a parent, I try to incorporate a lot of diversity in the books that I provide to my daughter. My husband is Korean American, and so my daughter is part Korean, and I wanna make sure that she sees herself represented in books. And I think it's really important though for parents to make sure there's a wide diversity of the types of kids that their children are reading about so that kids grow up with the understanding that the stories of all people are important to read about and care about and we all have a common humanity and maybe more diverse children's books will help fix racism a little bit. I hope so. I think so. I've also been hit hard by the libraries closing down for the pandemic. We would normally go every two weeks and get a giant stack of books so that we wouldn't have to keep reading the same shit over and over and over again. So the fact that the library has closed has really been hurting us. I've read Pete the Cat in his white shoes like so many times. <laughs> the problem with buying books online is like you don't know just from the cover and the blurb if something a kid that's your kid's age is going to connect to. You don't know, are they gonna be like some problematic elements to that book? So it's really great to get recommendations from other parents. So I'm gonna share with you my favorite books that we happen to have in our house that are about Asian American kids. And hopefully um, I'll get more ideas of more books that I can buy from y'all in the comments. Now I decided to make this video about books with Asian American protagonists rather than by Asian American authors because unfortunately that number would be too small. Only these four, have a Asian American author or illustrator attached to the pro to the project. I will link to all of their um, social medias if I can find them so that you can support their careers. I love more books about Asian American or Pacific Islander characters actually written and illustrated by uh, those people. And so I would love more suggestions in the comments. So the first couple books are all about food and uh, you may notice a trend in children's publishing about Asian American kids that there are a lot of books about food. In defense of that trend, I think that books about uh, foods that are not like American cuisine are really important for kids to read. I'm going to link to a great article called Don't Yuck My Yum about how important it is for kids to read about different ethnic cuisines and how important it is to raise kids who will not yuck other kids yum. So if my kid brings some like rice and kimchi and tofu to school for lunch, make sure like you're raising a kid who's not gonna go, ooh, yuck, what is that? You know, when they see a food that they're not used to. Um, and one of the ways you can do that is by reading books about all the different kinds of food that people around the world enjoy. And building an understanding in your kid that, you know, food is really important to people's culture and you shouldn't yuck other people's yum. I'm glad that there's so many options, like great book options about Asian cuisine, but like I'll talk about, I also think it's really important that we have more books with Asian protagonists that are not necessarily about food, like Asian kids can go on an adventure too. So my daughter is Korean American and the number of books specifically about Korean American kids is pretty limited. Um, I'd love to hear more good options, but one that I really love is this book, Bibimbap. This book, my daughter has loved since she was probably like 10 months old. This was one of the first books that she really loved, and I think it's because of the rhythm. I also think kids do just love books about food. Like Kids understand from a very early age, food is essential and really important, and we have to eat it all the time, and so they're interested in books about food. Um, the rhythm of the story is has a really fun, like, peppy rhyme. Almost time for supper, rushing to the store. Mama buys the groceries, more mama, more. Like, it's fun to read. The art is like uh, these lovely watercolors and the kid is really cute. It's just about a girl helping her mom 
go to the store, get groceries, and make bibimbap. I guess my only like issue with the book is kind of the like old fashioned gender roles. Like it's the daughter and the mom doing all the cooking. And then the only role the father plays is a page that <laughs> my husband always skips when we read this book, which is where they pray before their meal. We are not a religious family, so we do not pray before our meals. You know, it'd be cool if the dad helped out with cooking, but he doesn't. But the fact that this is a book about um, Korean food and uh, celebrating that and it's really fun. Like I really, I really love this book and I would definitely recommend it. It's got a recipe in the back for making bibimbap if you want to do that as well. Uh, that could be fun for older kids who could read it and actually help like with the cooking like the girl in the story. And there's a cute little picture of the mom and kids making food together. That's the author. This book was one I checked out from the library just on a whim. It was like on the display table and I am always looking for more books with Asian American characters. So I checked this out. It's called Magic Ramen. The whole thing is sort of like an advertisement for ramen noodles, but that's okay. The art is so cute. Like look at this. Just even the inside page. It's a super moving story. It's about a uh, Momofuku Ando, who invented uh, instant ramen. It starts out really dark, right? And I was surprised that my daughter, even as young as like one and a half years old, I think was when we started reading this to her, um, she responded to it. Like she doesn't know what World War II is, but the book starts in the aftermath of World War II when Osaka was devastated and people were waiting in long lines for a bowl of ramen and they would wait for hours to get a meager bowl of ramen and Momofugu had this dream of making a ramen that was nutritious. It had like spinach and eggs and powdered milk in it. And um, so it would be more nutritious than the cheap ramen that they could buy, but it would also be instant so people could have hot soup anytime, anywhere. Like I'm obsessed with how great the design is in this book and the art. I'll show you some of my favorite pages. The story for like, a story about inventing ramen. It's incredibly moving. I like get choked up sometimes reading the last words of this book, which are, Ando's ramen was nutritious, tasty, and convenient. Thin, cold, tired, and hungry people ate it and felt better. Ando smiled. Peace follows from a full stomach, he said. Ever since, Momofuku Ando and his backyard invention have fostered peace, one bowl of noodles at a time. So it's got a lovely message. I think that there's a lot of wisdom in um, how important food is and nutrition and how powerful that is in fostering world peace. Like that's a beautiful message. So I really recommend this book. Our last sort of food and eating related book is Maggie's Chopsticks. This was a library pick that I got stuck with in quarantine, um, as you can probably tell from the glossy cover. So I went to the library like two days before quarantine hit and they closed them all down and so uh checked out uh, I think like 20 books and this was one of them so Maggie's chopstick is about little Maggie and she is struggling to learn to use chopsticks it goes through how each of her family members like they handle their chopsticks in a different way the mom is like very bold and the brother is sort of grabby and greedy and this older sister is very graceful with her chopsticks. Uh, and the little girl asks her cat for advice. The art, again, I really love these um, hand, I guess it's painted, it looks like it's painted and maybe pencil, like a mix of pencil and painting. Really beautiful art. And I think that's just like a really simple struggle for a lot of kids from Asian American families where you eat with chopsticks regularly and being a little kid and you don't know how to use them, like that's something kids can relate to. So uh, my daughter does also really enjoy this book and I was glad that I picked this up from the library. This is one of the few books that is explicitly about um, Korean American kids. And so this is my first book of Korean words. It is so cute. I'm obs I keep saying this, but like I'm obsessed with the art in this book. This is another one that my daughter enjoyed this book from a very young age, like one year old. Look at this. I mean, what little kid wouldn't want to read this? So for each page, um, for each letter of the English alphabet, there is a little rhyming poem. 
So this is F is for flying. Nalda, we say, I fly in my dreams. Whoosh, up, up, and away. And then sometimes there's a little explanatory note. Like here it says, the English language has some letter sounds that Korean doesn't. The F sound is one of those. So even when there's like a page where there's not a sound, that corresponding sound in Korean, they, you know, they have a little poem about it. It's weird that they made G is for kimchi, not kimchi like that. I've never seen kimchi written as kimchi, but all right. And it's really, I really love that kimchi is featured in this book and just that Ramona sees kimchi in a book and like, seeing that normalized in that way. I mean, like watching TV and consuming other books, you know, she's gonna see Americanized food represented all the time, like pizza, chicken wings, etc. Kimchi is so foundational to Korean cuisine and we eat it all the time in our house. We always have a huge jug of it in the fridge. And so it's really nice, just she sees it represented in that way. I think that's empowering. It's a little bit harder to find books with Asian American protagonists where they, it's just a kid on an adventure and the kid is explicitly Asian American or Pacific Islander. One of those books that I have found is called Small World. My daughter hates dust jackets, so she rips the dust jacket off this one and the it's one of those where the underneath the dust jacket is a different and beautiful image. So if you go to order Small World by Ishta Mercurio, um, it won't it won't look like this. It's sort of abstract, and so I think that's one reason my daughter hasn't totally connected to it yet. I love the art. I love the story. This is a book that makes me tear up, and then my daughter's like a little bored by it. I mean, I think it's going a little bit over her head, but she will sit through it, and I think that as she gets older, she'll really love it. Uh, it starts out, when Nanda was born, the whole of the world was wrapped in the circle of her mother's arms, safe, warm, and small. And every parent out there knows like how tiny your world feels when you hold your newborn for the first time. And it's about her circle, the, about how her world expands as she grows up. So first, just your mother's arms is your whole world, and then it expands to the circle of your family, and it expands to all of your playmates. And it keeps expanding and expanding until Nanda, our main character, is taking off into outer space, landing on another planet that is not the moon, but somewhere else. And as she looks back at home, she sees the earth safe and warm and small. Oh, this page always makes me tear up. Um, and there's Nanda looking back at Earth, how far she's come. Can you imagine if your child grew up to be an astronaut? I want my daughter's feet to stay firmly on planet Earth. But so it's a beautiful book. Um, some of the language, I think it's really challenging. Like there's this page where it's like Nanda going off to college, but the text is, it soared through a symphony of glass and stone. That's very abstract for kids. So it's one of those books where you might have to sort of translate the difficult text um, to make the story simpler for children. And that might help them access the book a little bit better. It's clear that Nanda's family is South Asian. She is the hero of the story, but it's not like about her, just her food basically. So I would recommend Small World. It might be a pick that parents love more than kids, but it's really beautiful and worth it. A book I got really recently is this one, The Mermaid. It's basically a retelling of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, but with a mermaid named Kinero. Instead of bears, it's a family of octopuses who have left their house behind and the curious mermaid swims in and starts messing with their stuff. This is another book with absolutely gorgeous art. I think visually it's a little overwhelming for kids. I've had success getting my daughter interested in it by like pointing to like, this is where you need to focus on this page because there's just so much detail and like so much going on on every page. There's these little windows where you see what the octopus family is doing while Kinero is exploring their house. Um, I think this book is really beautiful. This one is still new in our collection, but I absolutely love it. Look at this, the little baby, its hat is a manta ray. Like how cute is that? It's so cute. 
<laughs> oh gosh. Um, yeah, so this one's, I really like this. I think this is beautiful. The last book I have where the like protagonist is uh, Asian American is um, What Does It Mean to Be Present? My daughter colored on this copy a little bit. This is a well-loved book and I'm a little surprised it, because it's a book about teaching your kid mindfulness and sometimes those books can be real eye rollers for kids but this one my daughter absolutely loves she's loved this since she was two years old i think again it's just because the art is so cute and inviting welcoming you in it just sort of talks about like what does it mean to be present it means paying attention and noticing when somebody needs help and taking the time to give it to them there's a couple of different children who are featured in the book, but this girl who's South Asian, um, she is on most of the pages, so she's kind of the one that we're following the most. And you see her with her family. Being present means being grateful for your family and your puppy dog and playing at the beach. I guess she and the white boy are sort of like both the main characters and then there's all their friends in the tree at the end my daughter really likes it and loves reading it i don't know how much of it she's internalizing and really learning about mindfulness but i think that um i'm really glad we have it i hope that some of that philosophy is like sinking in i think that this book is put out like in conjunction with teak not han or it was like recommended from like the teak not han monastery or something like that it was i think i read about it on a list of like how to help your kids learn to be present i was raised in an incredibly neurotic family and i only discovered meditation and mindfulness in my 30s when i was pregnant and so i really hope that my daughter grows up with a lot more mindfulness to fall back on when things get stressful <laughs> And hopefully she won't have an anxiety disorder. The only book that I have that I think is explicitly a Pacific Islander book is the Moana book. Uh, this is my daughter's favorite movie. My daughter was Moana for Halloween last year along with her best friend. There were two little two-year-old Moanas holding hands together trick-or-treating. It was really, really cute. So I would love more suggestions of books starring Pacific Islander characters. This is one of the books that mommy really has to be in the mood to read it because these Disney read aloud books are very long. Like it takes about 20 minutes. This is a lot of text. It takes about 20 minutes to get through the whole thing. But what's cool is because my daughter is so familiar with the movie, I feel like on each page she can really imagine the scene around it. And so she'll sit and listen to all this text. As a three-year-old, she normally does not have the patience to sit and listen to this much text per page, but because it's a movie she's very familiar with, she's more willing to sit and listen. Now, sometimes I do shorten it down for either my own benefit because I'm tired and I wanna get through the book, or if I notice that like her attention is lagging, I'll just read like the first sentence or two on each page, or I'll just kind of paraphrase it. This is great, my daughter loves it, but I would love more Pacific Islander representation. So give me some suggestions in the comments. Those are all the books that we have that feature characters who are Asian American or Pacific Islander main characters. We do have a bunch of books that are just like kids of all different skin tones playing together. I'll run through those quickly, but I think those are really important to incorporate in your collection even if the world is often not like that. I'm very blessed to live in Houston. My friend group is very diverse and my daughter plays with um, a very diverse friend group, but I know statistically speaking, a lot of places kids are being raised mostly with um, people of their own demographic. So it's nice, at least in books, for them to see you know, kids of a wide, um, a wide array of diversity playing together. So some of my favorites that fall into that category, 10 Little Fingers, 10 Little Toes, such a classic. Great with little babies even. Belly Breathe, this is another great one for teaching mindfulness. That was a recent scholastic pick. Um, I'm happy, sad today. Also the main character in this book has two mommies and it's about how feelings can be complicated sometimes. We can't currently read this book because this page makes my daughter too sad because she misses school so much. Um, so all the books that are kind of set in school are taken out of the rotation, which is like super heartbreaking. But um, 
But when things get back to normal, or if your kid isn't as sad about not being in school, this might be a good one to pick up. Fort building time. This is another library pick, pre-quarantine library pick. Uh, very cute, bunch of different kids building different kinds of forts together. Dare to dream big, another library pick we did. This one's very cute. Lots of different kids all being brave and daring to do stuff. Mm. Oh, and I like that this one, I love when, I think there should be more books with just photographs of kids on the cover. I think that um, kids really love photograph books, but they don't like publish very many of them anymore too. I feel like this book is a little dated. The last one that falls into that category, but one I would like really extra specially recommend is We're Different, We're the Same by Sesame Street. I think this is a really great anti-racist children's book pick. And it talks about like how things about us are different, right? Like we have different looking eyes, but our eyes are also all the same because we use them to see and blink and wink and weep. And so, um, you know, this book, our bodies are different, but also our bodies are the same because they all stretch and rest and work and play. They all need food and rest each day, dance and wriggle and ride a bike. They might look different, but they're alike. Um, so lots of different bodies represented and uh, it kind of goes through each of the facial features incorporating like different skin tones of people and also different Sesame Street characters. So it's sort of about how we use our senses and also it's about how, you know, you're gonna, cause kids are gonna notice like that they look different from other kids, especially if maybe they're a racial minority in their area and they're like the only kid in their school who's going to have a certain skin tone or certain features. They're gonna notice that even when they're like toddlers, they're gonna notice that and so um, if they get the message that they're not allowed to talk about it, they might internalize some idea that being different is shameful or wrong. So whether your kid is a minority or the majority, like your kid is going to be in class with some kids who are different from them or maybe different from everyone else in the class. So you also need this book if your kid is just a white kid in a mostly white school because they need to know and have the language of like, oh, those kids are different, but also we have a common humanity. We're all the same. Um, I think that this is a really powerful book for talking to kids about that. The race blind, color blind ideas of the 90s were like, let's just pretend that uh, we're all you know color blind to race. Clearly that hasn't solved racism. Studies have shown that by three years old, children notice racial differences and already express racial preferences for the more privileged races. If that horrifies you, I will link to some of the research in the description so you can read about it. I have a friend I'm also gonna link to who is writing, in the process of writing a children's book. Her name is Lisa Chow. She's an incredible illustrator. I will link to her Instagram so you can see her beautiful pastel girl empowerment art. And we had a really interesting conversation because she wants to illustrate a book with clearly Asian American uh, characters and was having trouble drawing typically Asian features in a way that doesn't feel caricatured. And it's really sad that Asian features have been caricatured in media for so long that even just trying to represent them accurately can feel like a minefield, even for an Asian American artist. And I noticed when I, when we had this conversation, I kind of went through my books and you know, um, found like a lot of the times the Asian American characters, like their eyes are just represented as dots rather than um, the artist like trying to recreate a single fold eye. The book that did it best though is Maggie's Chopsticks. Like these characters are unmistakably, like have Asian American features, but it doesn't come off as like caricatured at all, I don't think. Lisa's book is gonna be amazing and I hope you all follow her on Instagram and support her when her book comes out. If you are the parent of an Asian American or Pacific Islander child and you wanted more books for them, um, I hope that this is helpful. If you're the parent of non-Asian American or Pacific Islander kids, I would still strongly encourage you to make sure that those types of kids are represented in 
the books in your home. Right now with the coronavirus pandemic and the way that certain politicians are um, drumming up hatred against the Asian American community, there have been attacks of racial violence against members of the Asian American community just for being Asian American. It's particularly more important than ever to make sure that we are teaching our kids tolerance and inclusivity and uh, worldliness. And so regardless of what race your child is, you should have books representing Asian American and Pacific Islander kids in their library. You should have a wide diversity of books so that your kids see children from all over the world represented, ideally. I hope this video gave you some good suggestions for ones to try, and I would love to get more for my daughter. So please leave in the comments recommendations of other books we should be reading our kids this May, this Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. As always, if you enjoyed this video, like and comment. Um, if you want me to do more picture book reviews, let me know that as well. And subscribe so you can help me grow my channel. Thanks, bye.